For so many young people in 2022, they don't have any experience of dating outside of dating apps and don't know a world without social media. But for those of us who remember the days before smartphones even existed, this film will definitely bring back some memories about how kids used to hook up and learn how to spit game back in the day. Raising Victor Vargas was a critically acclaimed independent film that came out back in 2002, exactly 20 years ago. I remember when I went to see it in the theater back then and have now just rewatched it after all this time. And the verdict? I would say this movie still holds up today. It is still just as brilliant and heartwarming as it was then. And what I love most was that it was so realistic and makes you feel like these are real teenagers and not just some glamorous Hollywood actors trying to play teenagers. And the writing as well was just superb. But before we get into the movie review, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. Your support of the channel is greatly appreciated. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the channel. This movie says a lot about coming of age, hooking up, and how much sexism these kids have to contend with in their day-to-day -day lives. At the beginning, the film presents us with three different female characters, all living on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. There's Donna, there's Judy, and then there's Melanie. Now Donna, who everyone in the neighborhood calls Fat Donna, which is just awful, she's having sex with the protagonist of the film, Victor. But Victor is ashamed and doesn't want anyone to know. <laughs> Person. What we do is between me and you. But he gets outed anyway by his best friend and sister, thus ruining Victor's reputation around the neighborhood. And poor Donna just gets talked about like a dog. I heard you fucking that fat bitch Donna. Oh, shit. Yo, son, get out of here, man. Who told you that? I'm not trying to be shit. I'm going to tell everybody that you were with fat Donna, that ugly bitch. You know what, Victor? It don't even matter. Because by the end of this week, you won't be able to step a foot outside without somebody laughing in your stupid face. You'll always be known as Fat Donna's man, and that shit will be funny. And sadly, we never circle back around to her in the film to see how she was reacting to everyone talking about her, because nobody should have to put up with being talked about like she was. Then there's Judy, or as she's been nicknamed in the neighborhood as Juicy Judy. I'm kissing on Juicy Judy yesterday. Oh, man. I'm sorry, I called Juicy. She is the antithesis of Donna due to her size and features. She is considered the most desirable girl in the neighborhood. However, her pretty privilege is not so great as the attention is making her life truly miserable because the guys in the neighborhood are constantly harassing her. Hey, 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 And yes, he did just call her a bitch. Then there's Melanie, Judy's best friend, who is envious of all the attention Judy is receiving and considers herself to be the ugly best friend. She wants to be noticed even though Judy tries to warn her. The kind of attention these guys are giving is disgusting. And later we can see how all this harassment really has traumatized Judy and made it damn near impossible for her to trust men. But Melanie just doesn't get it, even though she happens to be standing right next to Judy in this scene, when this guy just blurts out something sexual again, so vulgar and disgusting, I just had to mute it out. But in my opinion, Melanie is so desperate for attention, she winds up having sex with Victor's best friend, the only guy who seems to notice her and give her any attention. You know you look like Julia Roberts? <laughs> you know that? Yeah, beautiful smile. Thank you. But the film does a good job of not only exposing the sexism and misogyny the girls face, but also how all of this toxicity affects Victor as well, who starts out with so much machismo. He almost loses the girl of his dreams, but he is able to grow as a young man and stop performing and start being comfortable just being himself around Judy, which leads to them establishing a real relationship. But it is fun to watch Victor do everything wrong in the beginning. So back in the 2000s, there was only one approach, the cold approach. No cell phones and no texting. You had to walk right up to a girl and know how to introduce yourself. Watch Victor try and work his game on Judy. My name is Vic. This is my associate right here, Harold. Enjoying the day. Nice day in the pool. You my man just want to know if I want a double date one of these days or something, you know? Vic? She has a boyfriend. Anyway, listen, what's your name? Oh, you're gonna know me now? 
You know, my man just want to know if y'all want to chill one of these days. Bring a friend here. Vic? Yes. Do you see the wall of isolation? Are you can't annoy, yo. Can you see I'm trying to talk to her? Damn. Are you deaf? I have a man. I heard. I definitely heard. Let me tell you something. We ain't never been with a man till you been with me. Wow. Did he really just tell her? You ain't never been with a man till you've been with me? Oh my God. So Judy walks him over to his own reflection, makes him look at himself, and she says, does that look like God's gift to women to you? Damn, she totally shut him down. So after completely striking out, Victor decides he does not want to give up. But without a cell phone number or any social media, Victor has to get creative. He decides to hunt down Judy's little brother and convince him to do another face-to-face -face introduction where he tries to apologize for coming on to her earlier, and she's still not biting. Then something interesting happens as he's talking to her in the lobby of her apartment building. Watch this guy from earlier, the one who basically just called Judy a bitch. Watch him pass them in the lobby. And this part was really sad when re-watching because in that moment, Judy realizes the only way she can stop getting constantly harassed is to have another guy claim her as his girl. So when Judy gives in to Victor, he decides to take her up to his apartment and he immediately jumps at the chance to try and get her to fool around with him, trying out his tired moves on her first. This is it. So all the Victor love happens. What love? Yeah, he's thirsty. Want something to drink? Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. I didn't ask for a beer. So that's all I got. Yeah, right. Thank you. Why are you so far away for? I'm fine here. Yeah, you want to see something? Now? It's hot, right? <laughs> what is it? A privacy girl. Do you need me to leave? But when Victor realizes sex is definitely not on the menu with Judy, they embark on a journey together that requires actually getting to know each other, being vulnerable with one another, and Victor begins to see how hurt and traumatized Judy has been by her mistreatment, and they invest in an actual friendship that turns into love. It's a great story with so many other great characters. I highly suggest you go check this movie out on Amazon Prime. But let me know if you remember this movie when it came out back in 2002, or were you even old enough to see this movie when it came out? If you were, you may remember that this independent film was praised by critics, with Roger Ebert writing in 2003. Raising Victor Vargas tells the heartwarming story of first love that finds a balance between lust and idealism. Acted by fresh-faced newcomers who never step wrong, it sidesteps the cliches of teenage coming-of-age movies and expands into truth and human comedy. It's the kind of movie you know you can trust and you give yourself over to affection for these characters who are so lovingly observed. But drop down in the comments and let me know what you thought about this video and if you plan on watching this film. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.